Hi guys, it's Mr. Schwanekamp. Today we are talking about factoring by grouping and then also difference of squares. Kind of a weird section. It's a mixture of a couple different ideas. Technically you can't do factor by grouping until later on, um, but you already know how to do parts of it. So that's where it's put where it's at. Not a tough day, two different concepts. The first one we've done a little bit already. It should be pretty easy. Backside's a little bit tougher. We'll get to it here in a second though. All right, let's see what we can do. All right, so we are factoring here on the front side by difference of squares. We have already been doing that. All right, we did that back uh, a couple chapters ago, so or a couple of sections ago at least. So remember what we're doing here. If we're factoring by difference of squares, if you have a term that you can take the square root of both parts and get a even, not I, I keep saying even, but a whole number, uh, then you can use difference of squares. And so remember, x squared minus 16. If you took the square root of x squared, it would get you x. If you took the square root of negative 16, it would be 4 and 4. But it is called the difference of squares because one of them is positive and one of them is negative. That is factoring. Same thing on my next one, 25x squared. Oh, that's 5x and 5x because that's the square root of 25x squared. The square root of negative 64 would be 8 and 8. One of them's positive, one of them's negative. Do it again on C. All right, here we go. Square root of 100y squared, 10y and 10y. Square root of 9 would be 3 and 3 plus minus. You can only do this if it is a binomial, meaning it only has two parts. You're missing the part in the middle. It doesn't have a 0x. That's what we're looking for here. All right, and again, if you were to foil this back together just like we did in that last section, if I were to multiply that back together, it would get you what you started with. It's just rewriting it in a factored form. All right, letter D looks different. Oh, no, it's x to the fourth. Same process. It's a binomial. You can take the square root of both. To take the square root of x to the fourth, it's like thinking what number when you multiply or what thing when you multiply by itself is going to get you x to the fourth. And hopefully you know your properties of exponents enough to know that x squared times x squared gets you x to the fourth. So both of those are going to be x squared. Square root of 81 is 9 and 9. One positive, one negative. Boom. Next one, y to the sixth. So we have to think what number when we multiply together or what thing when we multiply it together is going to get you y to the sixth, that would be y cubed times y cubed, because you add exponents when you multiply them together like that, y cubed and y cubed, you got a square root 121, which would be 11, one would be positive, one would be negative, last one, w to the eighth, what thing multiplied together is going to get you w to the eighth, w to the fourth, w to the fourth, cool, square root of four is two, and two, difference of squares, one positive, one negative. That is factoring through the difference of squares. Pretty straightforward, don't let it be harder than that. It's just a matter of setting it up and working through just like we did there. Great, let's go to the back side. So back side is factoring by grouping. Factoring by grouping does not always work, but if it does work, it makes your life a lot easier. <clears throat> Here's the main idea with factoring by grouping. You are going to look at the first two things in your four-part polynomial and the last two things. All right, first two things and last two things. Looking at those first two things, you are trying to think, what could I divide out of both things? What do they both have in common? Well, they both have an x squared in them. So we take the x squared we put in front. x cubed divided by x squared would just be x, and negative 2x squared divided by x squared would be negative 2. So we factored out what they had in common. That's called finding the GCF, the greatest common factor. We do the same thing with the second one. What number can I divide out of both of them? Well, if it's got a negative sign here in front, I'm going to divide by negative for sure. I'm going to divide negative 9 out of both of them. If I take negative 9x divided by negative 9, it gets me just x. And 18 divided by negative 9 gets me negative 2. If you did factored by grouping correctly, and it can be factored by grouping, you are going to be left the same thing inside the parentheses for both parts. That is going to be one of your factors. And then whatever else is left over, which in this case is x squared 
and negative 9, that is going to become your other factor. x squared minus 9 and x minus 2. And then this x squared minus 9, oh, you can factor x squared minus 9 using difference of squares. You get x plus 3, x minus 3, and oh, yeah, that x minus 2 left over. Sometimes you can't always factor this. Sometimes you're going to have to solve it a different way. But that is how we deal with factors by grouping. Okay, this is going to help us to solve a cubic function. Cubic because it is x cubed x to the third power. Let's try it. So again, I'm looking at the first two things and the second two things, not forgetting that negative sign. So in the first two, what can I divide out of both of them? Well, they both have an x, and in fact, they both have an x squared. So I'm going to take an x squared out. If I take an x squared out of x cubed, I'd have an x left over. If I took an x squared out of negative 3x, I would have a negative 3 left over. Then my second one, all right, what do I need to divide out? Well, I have to divide out a negative four because I got to pull that negative with me. And then what can I take out of x and 12, or negative four x and 12? I'm sorry, I'm taking the negative four out, so it's going to be x and 12 divided by negative four is negative three. Oh, good. X minus three, x minus three, those are the same. So now I've got x squared minus four, this guy and this guy and x minus 3. Well, I can still factor this, guy, so I'm going to go ahead and factor that x squared minus 4 using difference of squares, x plus 2 and x minus 2, and then x minus 3 for the last one. I factored it. If I wanted to solve it, I would just take each thing and set it equal to 0, but that is how we factor by grouping. Let's do it again. This guy. Take out an x squared. This guy, take out a negative 1, because x and 2 don't have anything in common, but I have to divide by a negative if I have that negative in front, so negative 1. If I take negative x divided by negative 1, it's x. Negative 2 divided by negative 1 is a positive 2. Oh, yeah, look at this, x plus 2, x plus 2, it's the same. So we can do factor by grouping. This guy and this guy go together, and then x plus 2. If I can, I'm going to factor this part right here, and I can. I can factor that into x plus 1 and x minus 1 using the difference of squares, what we learned on the front side, and x plus 2. It's a good process. It's not one, to be honest, it's not one I use a bunch in other classes, and I probably should because it's pretty easy. First two parts, what can I take out? x squared. x squared and x minus 1, because when I take negative x squared divided by x squared, I'm going to be left with negative 1. In these two things, i got to take out that negative. So I'm going to take out a negative, and I can take out a 4 out of both things. If I take a negative 4 out of that, I'd be left with x. Negative 4 out of that, it's negative 1. Wonderful. i got an x minus 1 taken out of both of them. x squared minus 4. And x minus 1. To finish this thing, I'm going to factor that guy. Ah, x plus 2, x minus 2, and x minus 1. Last one, a little bit different now because I got a 3 in front. Who cares? Same process. What can I take out of both of them? Really just an x squared. That's it. So x squared, and then if I took an x squared out of 3x cubed, I'd be left with 3x plus 4. <coughs> And the second one, what can I take out? Well, I can take out a 2. It's pretty not exciting. But if I took out a 2, I'd be left with six divided, oh, 3x and 8 divided by 2 plus 4. <gasps> Look at that. Look at it. It's beautiful. What am I left with? x squared plus 2 and 3x plus 4. I cannot factor x squared plus 2 because it's a plus sign. Okay, If it's a minus sign, then I can use difference of squares, but it's not. It's a plus sign. So that's as deep as I'm going to be able to go on this problem. Okay, I cannot factor it anymore. I could solve it. All right, if they wanted me to solve it, I could take x squared plus 2 and set it equal to 0. And then square root, square root, x is equal to plus or minus 2i. But I can't factor anymore. I could solve, but I can't factor. Okay, that is factoring by grouping. Hope that makes sense to you. Again, it's a process that once you get used to it, pretty easy. Just got to get used to it first. Hope it helps.